Here's example six with the second derivative test, which uh, I think corresponds to our example six for the first derivative test. So we'll do this uh, same function here with a different test just to highlight the differences. So um, we'll just jump right in here. Step zero, find the domain of f of x. In this case, it's h of x, but again, doesn't matter what we call the function. Uh, same principles apply. So find the domain. Well, what is this? Just a polynomial, right? So the domain is all real numbers. So nothing crazy to worry about there. So that's good. Uh, that's going to be nice. Now we just want to find all the critical points of the function. So uh, take a derivative, set it equal to 0, find out where's the derivative undefined. Uh, derivative won't be undefined in this case because we're all just, we're just dealing with polynomials here. So what's the derivative? Uh, 2x to the fifth, that becomes 10x to the fourth. And then this is a minus 20x uh, to the third and then minus 30x squared. Okay, so we want to set this equal to zero and solve for x, so let's go ahead and do that. So uh, 10x to the fourth minus 20x cubed minus 30x squared equals zero. So are there any common factors we can pull out? Well, here 10 minus 20 minus 30, so we can pull out a common factor of 10. Okay. Uh, anything else, x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second, we can pull out a common factor of x squared. So what's left here? If we pull out 10x squared, then the only thing left is another factor of x squared. If we pull out 10x squared, then what's left is minus 2x. What's left here? Just a minus 3, right? Okay, so a uh, bunch of stuff being multiplied that equals 0, so either this equals 0 or this equals 0. Okay, so uh, 10x squared equals 0, or uh, x squared minus 2x <clears throat> minus 3 equals 0. So if 10x squared equals 0, that just means x equals 0. Uh, what about this here? So this, uh, this is going to be nice enough to factor. So x squared minus 2x minus 3, we can factor that into uh, x minus 3 and uh, x plus 1. Okay, so x squared minus 2x minus 3, when you factor, becomes x minus 3 quantity times the quantity x plus 1. So uh, either x is 3 or x is negative 1. So that's what we end up with there. So x equals 3 or x equals negative 1. Okay, so those are all of our critical points, right? Uh, 0, 3, and negative 1. So those are our critical points. Okay, so that's it for step one, find all the critical points of f of x. So, so far it's all the same as the first derivative test, right? But now what's different is we're not going to set up a sign chart and evaluate the first derivative in the intervals. Uh, we're going to find the second derivative, which for polynomials is usually pretty nice. So uh, here's our first derivative, so let's go find the second derivative. So h double prime of x is going to be, what, uh, 40x to the third minus 60x squared minus uh, 30, or sorry, excuse me, minus 60x. Okay, oh, sorry about that. Okay, so here's our second derivative, 40x to the third minus 60x squared minus 60x. So uh, that's it for step two, find the second derivative, really not bad for polynomials. Now step three, evaluate the second derivative at each critical point where the first derivative exists. We have three critical points, and the first derivative exists at each of these three critical points, right? So we don't have to worry about anything being undefined, it's just a bunch of polynomials. So now we evaluate the second derivative at each of these points. So uh, 3, negative 1, and 0. So let's go ahead and start with a 0. So uh, let's see. h double prime of 0 is what? 40 times 0 cubed, that's 0. 60 times 0 squared, that's 0. Minus 60 times 0 is 0. So we end up with 0. And if you're thinking ahead a little bit, uh, yes, that's bad, but we'll talk about that shortly. So now we have 3 and negative 1. So let's see what happens with uh, 3. h double prime to 3 equals uh, 40 times 3 cubed. Uh, and 3 cubed is uh, 27 but that doesn't really matter. Minus uh, 60 times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. And then we have minus 60 times 3. Okay, so let's simplify a little bit. So this is uh, 40 times 27. 
and 40 times 27 works out to be a fairly large number, especially compared to these, but we do want to be thorough and safe. So this is a 1080. Uh, and then minus 60 times 9, that's going to be uh, minus 540. And then uh, minus 60 times 3, that's minus 180. Okay. So what is this value exactly? Uh, we don't really care, but you know, 1080 minus 540 minus 180, um, it's a positive number, right? And that's all we care about once we get to step four. So, you know, if you're really concerned about it, uh, we can do 1080 minus 540 uh, minus 180, and it's going to give us about 360. But again, we don't care what the exact value is, just whether it's positive, negative, or zero. So uh, that's h double prime to 3. Now we do h double prime to negative 1, which is what? Uh, 40 times negative 1 cubed. Well, what's negative 1 cubed? Just negative 1. So this is a 40 times negative 1, well, we'll write the cubed, I guess, um, minus 60 times negative 1 squared minus 60 times negative 1. Okay, so if we plug in negative 1, that's what we end up with here. So uh, this is negative 40. This is uh, negative 1 squared becomes positive 1, so this is minus 60 times positive 1, so minus 60. Minus 60 times negative 1 becomes plus 60. So this is uh, negative 40, okay? So that's what happens there. All right, so that's it for step three. Evaluate the second derivative at each critical point where the first derivative exists. Now what we want to do um, is the step four here. So if the second derivative exists, which uh, we know it does, okay, we ended up with uh, 0, 360, and negative 40. So then we just apply the second derivative test. Um, so let's just go one by one and apply the second derivative test. Here's zero, okay, so the second derivative uh, equals zero, so that means we have to try something else, so this is inconclusive. So that's bad, you know, we went through all this work with the second derivative test, but we're gonna have to go back to the first derivative test anyway. So that's too bad, uh, that makes us sad. And uh, what about this one here, h double prime of three was 360, which is greater than zero, so that means we have a local min there, okay. So it's greater than zero, so we have a local min. And uh, we have a local min at x equals 3. And uh, what about this here? h double prime of negative 1 is negative 40, which is less than 0. So the second derivative test tells us that the original function h has a local max at x equals negative 1. So let's go ahead and write that down just to be thorough. So uh, h of x, h of x has a local, uh, what do we have? We had a local min at x equals 3, right? And again, we're only asking where these occur, not what they are, so we don't have to find the y values. If we want to find the y values, just take these x values, plug them back into the original function, okay, back into the original function. So there's local min at x equals 3, and uh, it has a local max at uh, x equals negative 1. Okay? So we'll write that here, uh, and a, okay. So that's um, part of the answer, you know, so again, if you're doing this on a quiz or a test or a homework assignment or something, you can't just stop here because we had this inconclusive case here, right? So you will have to go back to the first derivative test and figure out what's happening here. And we did do that in an earlier video. Um, and I think the result was that uh, this was neither a min nor a max. So uh, yes, that's what happened. This was neither a min nor a max. But again, we can't just tell that from the second derivative test just because we got zero here. You know, we don't know what's happening. We have to try something else, like the first derivative test. So all we could say for sure from the second derivative test is this. And you know, this, this was a little bit nicer than the first derivative test because we didn't have to uh, break the real line up in intervals. We didn't have to test the first derivative in each interval. Um, you know, I, we actually are going to have to go back and do that now uh, for this critical point here, zero because we ended up with zero here, so we're not sure what's happening. So again, uh, second derivative test is a little bit simpler, but it does have that downside where you might have the inconclusive case, in which case you'll have to go back to the first derivative test anyway. Um, so, and again, I do want to point out that if you were doing this on a homework assignment or a quiz or a test or something, you can't just stop here, because the question is, find where the local extrema occur. And if you get this as a result, you don't know what's happening here, so you can't stop here. We did figure out these, Okay, and that's okay, but we just don't know what's happening here yet, so we have to go back to something else. And uh, usually the first derivative test is what you'll want to do. Um, and if you do that, I think the result was uh, neither a min nor a max here. But again, we can't tell that from the second derivative test. 
all we were able to tell is this. So that's example six with the second derivative test.